We rejoice, we give praise, and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today is a joyful day. A joyful day not only because we're gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ to commemorate his resurrection in the breaking of the bread, but also because we'll celebrate the baptisms of Lily and Donovan Fortson. Today is a joyful day because through the sacrament of baptism, we, the Jesus followers, will welcome the newly baptized into the fellowship of the church so that they may journey with Jesus also. Our lessons today talk about shepherding, serving, spiritual seekers, being disciples, healing, ministers of hope, ministers of compassion, ministers of love to God's people. The lessons today are talking about all of us. In the first reading today, we heard how God used the prophet Jeremiah to shepherd the Israelites back into the fold. Our Lord God vowed that every sheep of the flock would be found and brought back if they were lost, and that they would be fruitful and multiply. I like that part. My interpretation of those prophetic words is that God promised not only to reunite his flock, but to continue forming loving and righteous shepherds to lead the flock toward the righteous path, the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Or, as Psalm 23 said today, lead us to green pastures and to still waters. In Mark's Gospel, the shepherds in training, as I like to call the disciples and all of us, had ventured out to do some mission work. And when those disciples returned to Jesus and shared all that they had done and taught as evangelizers, healers, and missionaries of Christ, he realized, hmm, my shepherds are tired. They've been hard at work. As Jesus heard their stories, he knew that they needed some rest <coughs> from the demands that take place in the mission field. You know how you feel when you're exhausted after a hard day at work or at school? Tired, yes, but at the same time, your cup runneth over because you accomplished what you set out to do. Well, that is what I imagine Jesus witnessed as he listened and as he observed his own shepherds in training. He invited them to rest. But as we heard in the gospel story, the people of God were still hungry for their spiritual presence, were still hungry for their divine healing and their teaching with love. And so Jesus and the disciples had to continue ministering to hungry followers. As I spoke with Lily and Donovan's parents and godparents this week, in preparation for the children's baptisms, which we'll witness in a moment, we talked about their ministries. We talked about their ministries to the children being shepherdesses and shepherds of their flock, passing on the traditions and the values that Jesus passed on to his disciples so that the people who were touched could learn and continue passing on the Spirit of Christ to others. Baptism is why we as disciples are here and why we as disciples go forth to continue pressing on that love. Our work to witness and teach the newly baptized and everyone else never stops. 
We heard in Mark's Gospel that Jesus encouraged his disciples to rest, but sometimes stopping is not an option. You see mom right now, stopping is not an option. <laughs> and that's all right. That's why we're here. Stopping is not an option because the hungry need feeding. The unloved need love. The sick need healing. Kids need tending to. That's just the way it is. Yesterday evening, I took a field trip to Franklin Park in Purcellville. I was invited by some neighbors of our Latino members whose baby was baptized right here last month. Lily and Donovan were here putting their hands into the water and blessing it for that child. I went to Franklin Park because, well, first I was invited, but secondly, because I'm trying to figure out where the 10,000 Latinos who live in Leesburg congregate and chill out. So I wanted to figure out also what their spiritual hunger is. And maybe eventually we can share the good news of Christ with them at St. Gabriel's. I felt a bit awkward. I felt somewhat out of place. I know nothing about soccer. There I was on my little gizmo finding out, why are there so many guys on the field? Well, 11 plus 11 is 22, lots of guys. That was the maximum number, that was the maximum number of players. You know, I went because I was sent. There were about 40 family members and friends cheering and laughing, resting and enjoying themselves as the men and boys played. I went to the mission field because the Spirit has been tugging at me, tugging at me to seek the sheep, sheep that may be in need of a fold. And you know, we have an awesome fold. I thought about the disciples being instructed by their shepherd, Jesus. The work of the mission evangelizer is hard work. It's not always comfortable. What I did yesterday was simply to go observe, listen, engage in light conversation. It wasn't really heavy lifting, <coughs> but I was tired after it. I wondered, what next, Lord? How do we really engage? No hardcore evangelizing yesterday, maybe, but I was a minister of presence. And that goes to today. You are all ministers of presence, and in a moment when we baptize these children, I'm going to ask you what your role in this is. With God's help, prayer. With God's help, presence. With God's help, love. That these two children of God know that you are ministers of presence in the name of Christ. That's why we baptize people in the name of Christ. I invite you to start your discipleship with Lily and Donovan today by praying with them and praying for them, by praying for their parents and their godmothers. That will be our ministry of presence today. You may not see Lily, Donovan, Manny, and Kate every day or every week. But by the baptismal vows that you will renew in just a few minutes, you are, up, you are called to uphold them in prayerful spirit. We are charged by Christ to be witnesses because we are all chosen. We are all chosen by the Lord to be his hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears, witnesses, disciples, whether at the soccer field or right here at St. Gabriel's Episcopal Church in this school building, we are called to be healers, teachers, mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers. And guess what? Your job, our job, never ends until Christ comes again. Amen. Amen.